Hey guys and gals, it is Mrs. Keitel here. We are going to be reviewing your shading styles. Now these are going to be incorporated into your still life, but these are going to be useful and beneficial for you anytime that you're drawing and you want to have that full range of value. Now remember, the full range of value is going to have the lights, the mediums, and the darks of your colors. So it's really important that if you're not going to choose color for your still life, which is an option that is up to you, that if you only have pencil, we can see the lights, mediums, and darks. And that's what we're going to learn about how to establish with some different styles today. We're going to talk about shading, smudging, cross-hatching, stippling, and scumbling. We'll talk about stippling and scumbling together. They're somewhat similar, um, but we're going to start out with shading. Now, to do simple shading with a pencil, it is just an adjustment of how much pressure that you're putting down as you're sketching. I also want to note that when you're doing drawing with pencil and you want to establish, establish lots of values, that there are actual professional pencils made to have lighter and darker leads. So they define them by a letter as well as a number, and depending on what kind of shade you want to establish, you can select a pencil to help you with that. Today I'm using a B pencil, that's a softer lead, which means that when it's applied on the paper, it's a darker value, um, but I selected this so that you could see well on the camera. So just be aware that these pencils exist and that there are many ways to create value, different pencils, but the techniques we're doing can just be using one. Okay, now to create different values, you want to make sure that you have a nice uh, gradient. It wants to have smooth transitions. There shouldn't be random dark spots throughout. It should be a nice smooth transition from light to dark. Now this can be done simply by adjusting those pressures that you're adding to your pencil. So you could start out with a really light, gentle sketch, and as you move on, you just simply add a little more pressure. You can also overlap some of your layers. You can come back in and add a little more, but the goal is that we would see from lights to dark on any object that you're shading. In addition to just those shade lines, you could also do some smudging. And smudging is a great way to get a really smooth and kind of um, soft effect. This can be used with the different kinds of tools, whether you want to use your hand, a Q-tip, paper towel, or Kleenex. But when you're doing smudging, you're going to be blending and blurring that lead into your piece. Now this is also really well worked with an eraser if you want to get some highlights and some softer areas, um, but that smudging can really create a smooth, smooth look. The next kind of shading that you might try is cross-hatching. Now cross-hatching is when we have lines that are crossing. They should not be parallel side by side. In order for this to create that dimension, there has to be lines that are crossing over each other perpendicularly. You can do lines that are up and down and side to side, diagonal lines going from each direction, and you can even combine different angles and different directions of lines to create a darker, more bold shade. Now, do not confuse our cross-hatching with just scribbling and filling in. That is not what we're looking for. Cross-hatching should be intentional, clean, and crisp, and you want to make sure you're not getting into that scribbly look. Our last two kinds of shading styles are stippling and scumbling, and both of these use circular shapes to build up on the shading. Stippling is when you would actually use just a dot, whether it's the dot tip end of your pencil or if you had an ink pen, but it requires you to create dots and build up many little tiny dots to create those values. The same can be done with scumbling, though it is not just a single dot, it is a little curly cue. You can even kind of think of when you were younger and you might draw a pig and on the little tail you'd make that curly cue. But this is a repetition of these and it's kind of like a flow. If you get into your curly cues and your scumbling, you would work lightly and get darker and add more layers as you go. 
All right. Now, guys and gals, these different styles can be used independently. They can be used together, but all in all, use what works best for you. Make sure to have a full range of values within your work, and I wish you luck in your drawing. Have a wonderful day.